B2B marketing and sales managers face some difficult challenges. The pressure is on to minimize budget wastage, increase ROI, and find new ways to get through to all of the influencers and decision makers needed to land the big accounts. Traditional methods just aren't enough anymore. Vendamore provides account-based marketing for complex selling B2B companies. It's targeted online advertising to just those key accounts whose business you're trying to get. In most B2B companies, around 80% of the potential revenue comes from a few top accounts. Yet, the marketing budget is often spread evenly over the entire customer base. Instead, why not invest more on those accounts you know have the biggest potential for revenue? Simple transactional selling, smaller deals, use something else. But for business-to-business -business companies making large, complex deals with long sales cycles and a high number of stakeholders, absolutely, account-based marketing is a perfect match. Think of the possibilities. A customized message tailored for that specific organization you're trying to sell to that only they will see online throughout your long sales cycle. It's like placing ads right outside their office, but made online. Your ads will show up in over 1 million local, national, and international websites, but only for the employees in the organizations that you target, not the guys across the street. It's IP-targeted advertising, and it's highly efficient and incredibly effective. And it's not just traditional ads. It's content, your content. Those videos that you spent all that time and effort on that are just sitting gathering dust on your website, put them to work. It can be white papers, a customer case, your live blog or Twitter feed. We work with you to optimize the mix of formats to achieve best results. Vendemore is the global leader in account-based marketing. We work with over 100 Fortune 500 companies worldwide in diverse markets, helping them to stay top of mind over a long period of time and drive relevant traffic to their website. Vendemore's account-based marketing solutions support both marketing and sales to help land the biggest deals you can't afford to lose. Hi, Christopher. Thanks for having us. Uh, please tell us who you are. So great, great pleasure to be here. Um, so I'm the founder of Vendemore, uh, a world leading company in account based marketing. Uh, I would call myself perhaps a serial entrepreneur. So I've started other companies like Taxi System and also a gift voucher company called Retain24. I've also invested in uh, five other companies. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, can you tell us your story of entrepreneurship and what drove your, you to start a business instead of working as an employee? Well, I was, uh, uh, I've been employed two years in my life. Uh, the first year I was a consultant. But I, uh, mm, I had a client that was a bit angry with me and he said, uh, you know, Christopher, a consultant is a, an entrepreneur without balls. Uh, you know exactly what to do, but you don't dare to do it yourself. He was a bit angry with me, and I I thought he was a dickhead, but then when I thought about it, he was actually right, and, and I realized that when you're a consultant, you just give other people's advice. Uh, but if you're an entrepreneur, you do it on your own, uh, so it's a, it's much more fun. And I'm also driven by, uh, by freedom and uh, some kind of impact being able to impact things that are of importance. That's a cool story. Uh, what is your source of inspiration and drive? Um, I've thought about that a lot. I don't really know. Uh, uh, what I do know is that I'm kind of a patriot um, and I strongly believe that uh, Sweden as a country needs uh, more big companies. We have created big companies like Ericsson, Atlas Copco, ABB, IKEA, H&M, etc., etc. But most of them were born a long time ago. I would like to create on my own together with others, but also influence others to create the next generation of Swedish big global successes. I think it's good for our country. Mm -hmm. Nice. Uh, you started... So the, the reason why I speak a lot about entrepreneurship is that I want to share some of the insights and it's all not only to Swedes it's also to others but it's my primary target market is Swedish uh, young entrepreneurs mm -hmm. and that's why you give these lectures to 
many universities. And, yes, uh, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I also give, I try to give a pretty naked story, not just the glamorous part of entrepreneurship, but also the shitty parts. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you start, started three companies. The first one you en- ended up with uh, bankruptcy. What was the cause of that and what did you do, learn from it? Yeah, so I I made tons of mistakes. First of all, I the company was created more around an idea rather than solving a real problem, um, which is actually one key takeaway when it comes to entrepreneurship. But then it was mostly around myself. I was I honestly thought that I had the best ideas all the time, and I I was it was a company with me and then people just supporting me, which mm-hmm. is. Uh, me.com <laughs> very <laughs> egocentric company and uh, that obviously doesn't work so well mm-hmm. so I, I was actually a pretty poor leader uh, I didn't work with others it was me giving all the others directives and then I was surprised when they didn't work hard enough uh, so that was obviously and lots of other mistakes but that was maybe the primary one and then Maybe a second reason for the bankruptcy was that I actually did have good advisors, but I didn't listen so much to them. I was a bit arrogant. So when they gave me advice, I most of the time thought, what well, do you know, old man? Hmm. It was mostly men, unfortunately, but I, I had a pretty arrogant view on their advice. So, mm-hmm. and that was expensive. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The third one, Vendemore, became a great success. You became a world leader in account-based marketing. How did the original business idea come about? Was it just a brilliant brilliant idea or was it something more? No, it, actually, I don't believe in... Uh, well, if you ask most entrepreneurs, they tend to describe what they do as an idea. But if you really ask them deeply, it's not. It's coming from some kind of frustration or let's call it the problem definition. You say, why isn't this working? Why why can I not do this when I'm in town, going to the bus, whatever? There's some kind of identification of something missing, uh, a problem, a pain. Um, and then the more was created around the notion that when doing large deals, it's very hard for sales to influence enough people in uh, an organization. And in the first two years of the business, the, the actual product that is big today well, didn't even exist. So we tried to solve the same problem by using traditional channels like emails and letters, etc. Uh, and after a while, when circulating enough around the problem, we realized uh, that we could do it in a digital way and created a new product around it. Mm-hmm. What were the biggest problems you faced uh, while starting these companies and running them? Well. I come from a family with no money. So the first one was, how can you start a company with no money? So I didn't have financial backing from them. So I had to find investors. And when you have no credibility, you have no track record, your business idea is very unproven. It's hard to raise money. But uh, I I guess some people trusted me enough to, to take part. And the second issue, especially in Vendemore, I think we did so, so much right in Vendemore. Uh, learned a lot from the first two companies and making less mistakes in Vendemore. The one mistake we still did was to uh, sometimes keep staff too long that you kind of know really early that they won't work out. So giving people too many chances. Most of the time when you feel it's not working, it is not working. You should just end it faster. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, while, while starting and running Vendemore, did you write business plans? Uh, so you think it's is better to create long-term plans, just like straight ways ahead? Or would you prefer like adapting uh, to here and now? And Yeah, I, I think, I think um, the big answer is adapting. But uh, then, of course, you should, you, should to work here and, you should work here and now without a big plan. But you can also, you gain a lot from at least understanding... Uh, which market you're going after, so, so maybe research which are those companies, how much, how big pains do they have in this area, 
uh, so some kind of analysis around that. But I have found that creating real business plans is, yeah, I think it's a good thinking process, but you should really know that three months after you've written it, it's probably wasted. So uh, actually the, the actual business plan is not so valuable, but the business planning is valuable. So people that think that you, you create a plan and you stick to it, they are, I would say wrong because you are changing so much all the time, especially in the early phase, you don't know enough to say this is exactly what's going to happen. You have those people, but they are the, the Steve Jobs of the world. And there are maybe five in the world that mm -hmm. are uh, have so much capacity to foresee the future that they know what to do. But don't think you are, I, I, I think you can dream that you're such a person, but uh, even the really successful entrepreneurs are not having that capability. So it's, if you want to have a high possibility of succeeding, you should do the adapt and go model and listen a lot to clients, listen about their pains, what they, what those pains lead to, and then figure out how you can solve them for them and not necessarily 100% by technology. Sometimes it's also man hours mm -hmm. and it's not ugly to deliver man hours. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And next question. What, what would you consider the most important learning you have acquired through the process of starting a company? Um, the biggest learning, which has become the, the biggest value in my life is to prioritize learning before prestige. Mm -hmm. So uh, to learn fast is the fastest way to success. And that means if you're in class, ask the stupid questions. If you're sitting with the company, uh, admit that you don't know what to do and <laughs> ask clients this. I mean, just ask stupid questions and, and also dare to do things you're not necessarily good at and uh, be prepared to fail and then learn. So it's e more important to fail, fail fast and learn fast than to uh, because even if you're after prestige, I must say, I also like prestige, but you get prestige faster if you learn faster. So if you put prestige first, then you will not learn fast enough. But if you put learnings first, you will get the prestige. Mm -hmm. Yeah, smart. Uh, how do you think you are different from your competitors? Um, I think we have a stronger why we are really built around helping big companies win big deals. Uh, I think most of our competitors are in it for a, a quick exit. They want to sell to someone and uh, they they see themselves as a tech play more, whereas Vendemore is building, I would say, a more sustainable position where you blend technology, information and people to help big companies win big deals. and not just create technology that grows fast. Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of the, that makes you, for example, recruit other people. It makes you not being scared of blending technology with people. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, who are your customers? Can you tell us more about your relationship with them? So Vendemore is very focused on uh, the biggest companies in the world. We work with 150 of the 2000 biggest companies in the world and mostly B2B tech companies like Siemens, IBM, Oracle, Microsoft, and those. Um, and uh, we typically work with the team. So inside these organizations, they, they also sell to big companies and small companies, but they typically are organized around the cost, both customer segments like industries, but also customer sizes. So they have typically teams that are focused on the biggest accounts, like a global account team. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, within our client, we typically work with a global account or the key account teams, both on the marketing and sales side, helping them to grow their biggest accounts. Mm -hmm. Uh, how important are employees to your success of your company? Oh, it's a, that, that's the, the, the first mistake I made in my first company was, first of all, I, I didn't realize how important employees were, so I didn't pay enough attention to them. But secondly, I didn't pay also, I didn't focus enough on getting really good people. I took in uh, cheap people, so lower salaries and 
and uh, prioritize low cost as versus high quality. But I think in a, if you want to be a, an international success, you really need to find really great people. And that's kind of a catch-22 because when you are not having a brand name or a proven track record, you're not able to attract stellar people. So it's kind of a catch-22, but that's a, at least if you manage to do that, you have a very good success, success ratio. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. Uh, you did many guest lectures at, for students at uh, Handelshögskolan, LTU in Lula, KTH, uh, Södertörn. Uh, what are the most important takeaways you give them on these lectures? So the first one is, I've kind of mentioned it already, the first one is to focus on problems, not ideas. And then uh, you can actually grow a company by steps. You do, first you do define the problems really well, and then you try to help the client to solve the problem even just by you, just by your time. You don't have to have a product initially. So you just take their, their task and you do it for them. And then when you do it for more and more clients, you start to learn. And based on your learnings, you can start to place a product into that environment that automates what you know and what you do manually and um, also start so some some people think you should start with a being able to sell to everyone yeah that could be a goal but tactically you need to select a small target group so you quickly can become an important company for that small target group and then you can extend the target group so in Vendemore we started off with a medium-sized enterprise IT companies with Swedish headquarters or even Stockholm headquarters. But now we have kind of extended the target group and even left some of it. So we've moved up to bigger and bigger and bigger IT companies and then extended from IT into other industries, but staying within the biggest companies in the world. So we've, we've walked uh, an intentional path strategically and now we've kind of left to partners we've left to smaller companies and then we focus on, on on the big ones so so start with a small customer segment where you can solve a big pain hmm. yeah thank you so much for this interview i think these answers are really really giving and really really smart uh, so we can learn a lot from it so thank you so much for that thank you my pleasure hmm.